All right, so there's a newer feature provided by Salesforce as far as how to restrict access to records, and that is called restriction rules. Now, how this works and how this is different than the core data model of Salesforce is in the past, you would always have the most strict security model at the base of Salesforce, and then you would open things up by granting access through sharing, and that's through organization-wide sharing defaults, this sets a default access level for an object's records. So let me zoom in here so you can see this a little better. And then also there's various sharing mechanisms such as configuring role hierarchy, sharing rules, and more. And now with the advent or the introduction of restriction rules is that you could further filter then anything that's opened up through the sharing mechanisms and org-wide defaults. You can filter that down to refine access. So you can filter records based on user and record criteria to give you a result set of these filtered records, okay? Now this is a very helpful um, help article to help uh, wrap your mind around how this works and when to use restriction rules and how to set those up. It also gives a visual representation of the sharing model in Salesforce before restriction rules existed. And you've got your base level of access via the org-wide defaults. And then through the role hierarchy is how you open up access vertically in the role hierarchy. And then sharing rules is where you open up access laterally. So it's not just vertical through the role hierarchy, but for those lateral to you in the role hierarchy. And then manual sharing is flexible. It can be all over the place as far as what opens up. And you've got your baseline object permissions, and that's through profiles and permission sets as well. So then if we scroll down a little more, we see after restriction rules, there's a slice of this as far as the darker shade is hidden records outside the record criteria from those restriction rules. The lighter blue represents the visible records matching the record criteria. And there's some notes here and links for creating a restriction rule. And I'll just show you real quick. Uh, some of the specifics on this is that this is available in Lightning Experience, so it's not available in Classic. And restriction rules are available for custom objects and then some standard objects such as contracts, tasks, and events. It's not apparently available on a lot of standard objects. Now, if we go into the object manager, I want to just check the account object and see if we have restriction rules here on the left and we don't. And so referring back to the help article, and I imagine that Salesforce will probably open this up more over time, but for now, at the time of this recording, these are the different objects that are available, contracts, tasks, and events, and custom objects. And so let me go into Object Manager and select one of those standard objects contract being one of those and you'll see restriction rules is an option here in object manager when you go into the object and it's just a matter of clicking on that that takes you to the same sort of diagram here to explain how this works you can create a new rule here and this is where you set the criteria and so it's here that you would give a rule name and i'll just start the process here but i want to show you some example restriction rules that you can reference you would probably want to give a description describing what this restriction rule would do as far as filtering out certain contract records and then you can specify user criteria or permission criteria and depending on what you select you can enter in that specific criteria based on for example user fields and some of the ones you may want to use would be if a user has a certain profile for example or certain role or if they're in a certain time zone, there's a lot of different options here that you can do. And then the re you can set also the record criteria to select which records the specified users are allowed to see. By record criteria, this would be based on field values. So these two sections or criteria here would be the first, the user criteria is selecting which users this restriction rule applies to. And then based on that criteria, if there's records that meet that criteria, the records criteria is where you select which records the specified users, these up here in the first criteria, which records they're allowed to see. And so that's based on record fields. That would be fields on the contract object in this instance. And so you can do something like only allow them to see, for example, that are associated with a specific price book or only those that they own, for example or those that are in a certain status, the list goes on and on. So you've got a lot of options here, but I think to further help you to wrap your mind around uh, how this works as well as you can work through some of these restriction rule examples, and that's linked from this previous screen that I was on in the help for the restriction rules homepage here. If you scroll down this link here, 
would be restriction rule example scenarios, as well as step-by-step -step instructions about how to create a restriction rule, as well as considerations to keep in mind when creating them. But here in the rule example scenarios, there's settings here, and this restriction rule allows the designated users to see only the records that have a specified record type. So you've got your user criteria as far as the click path of user and then profile ID. The field would be user role ID equals ID. And then this, this is where you would grab the record type in this scenario or example would be for contract object, but it could be for other objects as well. And then the record criteria would be record type ID name equals, and then you would give your sample record type name. And so that way you can filter down to only show for example, contracts with a certain record type. So that is restriction rules. That's available at the object level for a handful of standard objects at this time, as well as custom objects. And so if you found this Salesforce tutorial helpful, please do like and subscribe. And leave a comment down below for what you'd like to learn next in Salesforce. And I just might make it my next video. And until then, I'll see you in the cloud.